And so I am going to start by asking Gordon, come have a seat up here, Manu. Have a seat up here. We are really lucky today because we have some practitioners of design thinking in the room. Yes, they're academics, yes, it's theoretical, but they really put design thinking into practice in diverse contexts to serve diverse needs. And they're also experts at teaching it. So I hope that you can walk um, away today with some really concrete skills that you can take into your daily life. But I know a lot of you have, who here has heard of design thinking before? Okay, so we're about 50% of the room. Who feels like they could stand up here and tell everyone exactly what it is and how to do it? Okay, so we're at, I see one and a half. I see one and two halves, so I see two people. So we're gonna just start by a brief introduction as to what is design thinking to give you a taste of how it differs from the typical ideation process or the typical product development process. So, Gordon, what is design thinking and why is it important? Okay. It's yeah. All right, what is design thinking? I mean, I think the, the joke um, to friends of mine and I is that when, if, if, you, if you ask that question if you, and, and the person sort of rushes to answer, they're, they're, they're fake, they're not real. <laughs> because it's, it's one of those concepts that are, it's really tough to define because you can come at it from so many different angles. Uh, so I'm going to come at it from a different angle. So I was a, I encountered design thinking uh, here at West Newton at Design Continuum uh, in 2009. Design Continuum invented, quote unquote, the Swiffer. Everybody knows what a Swiffer is, right? Um, units with a stick on them, you can use it to uh, pop up the kitchen floor. Now, when they told me the story about how it was invented, uh, PNG came to them and said, uh, We want to redesign our uh, fluid dispenser bottles. And they said, How about we study cleaning? Let's understand how cleaning is done at the kitchen household <coughs> level. So that's, that's point number one. They, they took what we described as, as a systems perspective to the problem and didn't just focus on the narrow problem that they had, right? They wanted to understand the context of the problem a little bit um, so that they can catch all the stakeholders or the, the different factors that impact the problem. So they went out and studied people cleaning their kitchen floors. Uh, they got an HR company to hire these people and they told them specifically, do not clean your kitchen before we come, right? But when they got there, every single one of them was spotless. <laughs> um, so they learned something. You know, people value this concept of quick cleaning, being able to clean quickly when visitors are coming in. Uh, they set up cameras, they watch people clean, and they notice two things. I'm, I'm simplifying the story quite a bit, and you might have heard a different version. I like this version. Um, <laughs> they, 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 they set up cameras to watch people clean, and they notice two things. One, is that people were using multiple tools to clean, right? So people use a spot cleaner, take the broom, sweep, get a, a mop, bucket, soap, uh, water. And people were also cleaning, something very interesting, people were cleaning the, the mop as much as they were cleaning the floor. Right, you see that? So, insights. Right? Unusual insights, not from handing out a thousand surveys or going to a lab and sort of looking at uh, some processes, but watching people clean. So that's a very important method in design thinking. And then they came to a point of view, and that was that, and again, this part of this is me making this up, but part of the point of view would have been that people needed a tool that combined multiple tools and did not need to be cleaned whilst being used. Do you see the surfer? You see the surfer, right? A tool that combines multiple tools that does not need to be cleaned whilst being used. Strong point of view that then sort of forces a flurry of ideas. And we're gonna talk about how my tweets in a little bit, right? Opens up the design frame and then people can throw different ideas at it. The SWIFA became a multi-billion dollar category for PNG, changed the way they do innovation and stuff like that, right? So 
I, I, I proceeded to introduce this to, to my class. So this is 2009, you know, failed at many different approaches, but it worked over time. And then uh, this is at Northeastern University. So about two years ago, when uh, midlife crisis hit, I started asking all those questions of what impact am I making in life? I only have 25 years more. And so I ended up, <laughs> so I ended up in Ghana teaching design thinking. Uh, it makes a little more sense. Sometimes I, I regret it. But. Um, so, so design thinking, the Gordon definition is a, a problem solving approach that is user centered, takes a systems perspective, and because it takes a systems perspective, when you're combining so many different. Uh, data formats and all that, it often will lead to a creative outcome. That's it again. A user, a, a creative problem solving approach takes a systems perspective and will often lead to a creative outcome. And so I think the reason why it's taken off uh, is that most problems have been solved in this very, oftentimes we're very used to, if I ask you a question, you throw the answer at me without you don't need to sort of like, you want to show how smart you are, right? So design thinking is about just pausing and going to do some research and coming back and doing all these elaborate analysis and mapping out the process and coming to a point of view and doing ideation. And because the pro it sort of breaks down a problem space in that much detail, you will definitely find something interesting. So a lot, a lot of people are starting to sort of see this as a, a way to solve problems. So very excited to see how we can do all those things and engage very well with uh, Claudia here.